Right now on Wink News at 6, water is running low in Cape Coral. All new this hour, Wink News reveals why a plan to prevent this is all blocked up. Many of you are planning trips to the beach this weekend, but is the sand simply washing away? A local lawmaker says yes, and he wants to spend your money to fix it. And for any of you who appreciate classic cars, uh, this is so difficult to look at. Wink News with how this happened just minutes away. Get ready for a breezy Saturday and an even windier Sunday. Live from Southwest Florida's news leader, this is Wink News at 6. First on Week News at 6, raucous crowds confront Congressman Francis Rooney. Nearly 300 people showed up in North Naples today to question the congressman. Representative Rooney scheduled two town halls for today late last week. It happened after many of you called his office complaining he wasn't meeting with voters during an off week from Washington. Let's get you live out to the Cape right now where the second town hall meeting is just moments away from beginning. There are people wrapped around the building waiting to get inside. But first, back live to Naples, where Wake News reporter Nicole Papageorge begins our team coverage. Nicole, what issues got people fired up there today? Chris, you name it, people were upset about it. From the environment to immigration to even Planned Parenthood, people here had a lot to say to the congressman. From frustration to cheers to jeers. Emotions went wild today at Congressman Francis Rooney's town hall meeting in North Naples. But I know that it's important that people can speak up. It was the first town hall for Rooney after facing harsh criticism from constituents that he hadn't held one during the district work period last week. I've just been working Monday through Friday, as have all the other members of the House and Senate, so I haven't been able to have time to do this before now. Questions for Rooney varied from congressional term limits to fracking, immigration to gun rights. I think that they really tore into him, and I think he did a great job. In a lot of cases, he dodged questions and didn't really answer them, but we opened the communication, and that's what really matters. And I thought he handled himself really well. I'm a person who doesn't agree with a lot of what he said. Rudy says despite the contentious room and heated arguments, the afternoon was a success. I mean, we are American, and this shows how great our country is right here. And Rudy says he'll be holding a lot more of these town hall meetings in the future. For now, we're live in North Naples. Nicole Papageorge, Wink News Now. All right, thank you, Nicole. Speaking of that, complete team coverage now. Let's go to Wink News reporter Morgan Francis, who's live in Cape Coral for Congressman Rooney's second town hall. Morgan, what's happening now? Well, people have been flowing in uh, Lois to Fir First Baptist Church in Cape Coral for the past hour now. And uh, if people are at home, they're thinking about coming out, they still have some time. This line goes all the way around the building as well. You can see that there's a gentleman here handing out some blank cards to people so they can write down their questions that they have for Congressman Rooney. They're anxiously awaiting to hear what Congressman Francis Rooney has to say. Voters here have many burning questions. They want to know how he plans to tackle cleaner water. They're intrigued also about the Trump administration's plan to repeal and replace Obamacare. One woman says her concerns are for the younger generation. Well, Social Security, I'm, at, I'm 91 years old, so <laughs> uh, it, that's not as important to me as something for the young people. I want the um, young people to still get benefits that will help them. Now, again, this was supposed to start at 6, but it looks like they're going to be delayed a little bit because the line goes all the way around the building. We will have much more about what happens here tonight at First Baptist Church in Cape Coral on the Night Beat. Reporting live in Cape Coral, I'm Morgan Francis, Wink News Now. All right, thank you very much, Morgan. And Wink News streamed Congressman Rooney's entire town hall in Naples live on Facebook today. His Cape Coral event is live right now. Head over to the Wink News Facebook page to watch it. Now to a Wink News exclusive, a former interim police chief in Fort Myers is skeptical of a scathing report about a department in disarray. Some of it is just people's opinions and sour apples, and they just, that's, this is their opportunity in secrecy to bash someone. Dennis Eads patrolled your streets for 30 years. He says some parts of that report are just not true. 
Only Wink News anchor Corey Lazar sat down with Eads to talk about what he thinks is inaccurate. And, and when I read the report, there were several, I'm going to use the word inaccuracies because I can't think of another way to put it, when they were saying that one thing was done, but it was never investigated. Well, they were. Former interim chief Dennis Eads is specifically talking about a section of the audit detailing internal investigations. A detective faced allegations of driving under the influence and ran over a mailbox. The report says FMPD never performed an internal investigation, but only an administrative review. Eads says an internal investigation did happen. They were investigated. They were investigated through internal affairs. And the, the one in particular, the officer was actually fired. But why would they say that through was documented properly? I have no idea. And what about the allegations in the report of officers leaking information from warrants to drug dealers? There's always been rumors. Okay. There's been rumors about former police officers who are in other pos high positions right now since, since I started in 1986. You, you can't trust him because he talks to so-and-so or he gives information to yeah. this or that. So do you think FMPD is really as bad as what's illustrated in this report? Absolutely not. Corey Lazar, Wink News Now. The former interim chief does say he agrees with some aspects of the report, specifically saying the 2008 officer buyouts crippled the department when they lost 41 highly skilled officers. But the man at the center of one case mentioned in the report says he isn't surprised by the allegations. In 12 minutes, Only Wink News sits down with Nate Allen, who officers wrongly arrested two years ago. New information now, an 18-year-old is facing charges for yesterday's unfounded threat at Naples High School. Police say Grayson Barry used a Google Voice account to hide his number, but investigators still found him. Faculty at the school evacuated all 1,700 students to the mall and then Gulfview Middle School for hours. Some big changes coming to one of Lee County's busiest roads. Construction on two new and large living facilities is underway right now along Gladiolus Drive. This is raising traffic concerns for many of you who drive through there. Lee County says more than 42,000 drivers use that road every day. Here's a live look at the site right now. This will transform into a 460 unit senior living complex. And right down the road is Venetian Point, which will support another 180 uh, houses and condos. It's planned for, Lee County's planning for all this traffic, but many of you aren't convinced. Where do you put it? Uh, you know, is it good for any area? <laughs> you know, the old story, yes, that's fine, but not in my backyard. As of now, there are turn lanes at the Aveda site. That's the senior facility by, uh, by Lakes Park. They're coming to Venetian Point soon. The county also says it will be monitoring these traffic areas for improvements as this project moves forward. Right now, a lack of money means some southwest Florida beaches are washing away. That could lead to problems for tourism and more damage come hurricane season. Wake News anchor Channing Frampton spoke with one state lawmaker who is working to send more money toward beach renourishment. He joins us live from Naples, where the new proposed law was just introduced. Yeah, in recent years, since about 1998, the state of Florida has been spending about $30 million each year to keep our beaches built up. That money is not enough, according to Republican State Senator Jack Latvala. Today, he proposed a law that would make that figure $50 million to help keep our beaches built up. Now, without that money, it's hard to replenish the sand that's washed away. He says 20 million Floridians living along the coast need that sand to keep storm surge from damaging property during storms. The beaches keep us safe, but they also pay the bills. Tourism is our number one uh, uh, jobs producing uh, industry. Uh, we have 1.4 million people in Florida who work in our tourism industry, and obviously our beaches are a big part of producing those tourists and getting them to come to Florida. Well, that law has yet to pass. It's not in place yet, but the senator is part of the Appropriations Committee. He's the chair in the Senate for the state of Florida, and uh, he's confident that they're going to be able to get this passed and so the projects can start to rebuild our beaches. Live in Naples, Channing Frampton, Wink News Now. All right, thank you very much, Channing. Well, have you seen this yet online? It's certainly not something you see every day, one car on top of another, but the cringeworthy part, oh, that's a classic <laughs> car that was underneath. The owner came out to find a Ford Fusion on top of his beloved 1950s Chevy Corvette. This is at the Walmart in Englewood. Witnesses tell Wake News the woman in the Ford accidentally stepped on the gas instead of the brake. Car enthusiasts say they feel for the owner. The poor owner. <laughs> you know, it's a $100,000 car roughly, and uh, the car sitting on top of it, 
you know, and just, just heartache. The classic car owner who bought it in 1978 says because of all the memories he shared in that car to him, it's priceless. He tells Wink News he plans to get it fixed. You know, stepping on the gas doesn't explain the angle either, so it'll be interesting to find out. Ex well, maybe the abutments in the parking lot? Yeah, that? Who exactly knows? How. I don't know. That's wow. just awful to look at. Yeah. The NFL star sat in handcuffs for hours when he shouldn't have. It's still kind of overwhelming to think, man, this is actually going on. Brand new at 6 o'clock and only on Wink News, Nate Allen is opening up about that scathing report on Fort Myers Police. Some Cape Coral canals are at risk of running dry. New right after the break, Wink News examines the ways Southwest Florida's largest city is trying to find more water. Enjoy your Friday evening. How couldn't you? It's nice outside now. I've got details on the weekend coming up. New this hour, Cape Coral is dealing with a water shortage and has its eyes set on a big project that could help keep it from happening again in the future. But a deal with the city of Fort Myers stands in the way. Right now, negotiations between the two cities are at a standstill. Wink News reporter Adam Wright is live in Cape Coral with the new details on that. Adam. The Cape Coral city manager may soon ask for both city councils to get together to try to hash this out. Now, a little background, the drought we're experiencing is depleting the Cape's freshwater canals, which the entire city relies on for irrigation water. So the city's urging people to water their lawns one day a week instead of two. The city of Fort Myers releases millions of gallons of treated water into the Caloosahatchee River every day. And for years now, Cape Coral has been trying to convince Fort Myers to let them use that water. The problem is money. A Cape Coral City spokeswoman says they're willing to pay Fort Myers 95 cents per 1,000 gallons of that water, but the city of Fort Myers wants $2 per 1,000 gallons. We think that that's unreasonable because that would mean that the uh, customers here in Cape Coral would be subsidizing the customers over in the city of Fort Myers. There's no sense gouging another city that lives right next door just to, to make some money for itself. Now a Fort Myers city spokesperson tells me that in order to do this, they'd have to upgrade their water plant at a cost of about $300 million. So that might be why they're asking for a little bit extra money. I am told that both sides do want to reach an agreement on this. So we'll track it and let you know what happens. Live in Cape Coral, Adam Wright, Wink News now. All right, we'll follow the negotiations, Adam. Yeah. Thanks. And you know what? We're in that time of year when water is hard to come by from the sky, yeah. isn't it? No rain coming next several days. In fact, the wind will be up, the humidity will be down, so there will be an enhanced brush fire mm -hmm. threat. So be careful this weekend. Otherwise, enjoy. It's going to be a nice Saturday and Sunday, just breezy at times. Saturday, windy at times on Sunday. Temperatures now pretty comfortable. We've got some low to mid 70s inland, low to mid 70s closer to the coast, but the wind. Did kick up to about 15 to 20, and then we had gusts of 25 to 30 earlier today. Right now, we've got a few spots reporting teens to near 20 miles per hour. These are the gusts in the last few moments. We've got a Mockley gusting at uh, 28 miles per hour and a wind gust of 25 miles per hour. Naples, Cape Coral, 78 degrees, 50 percent humidity. It's lower now, the humidity, than it was yesterday, and we've got some breezy weather still in place. There's that uh, 20 mile per hour wind at Naples, 73 degrees with 55 percent. Relative humidity, clear and dry, no rain in the forecast. It's going to be a dry evening and certainly a dry weekend. And temperatures now in Fort Myers about 76. There's the breeze at Page Field, 14 miles per hour. So the breeze will be with us this, week, uh, this evening, 15 to 20 miles per hour as temperatures stay in the 70s, partly cloudy and continued breezy for the next couple of hours. A little cooler in the morning. In fact, for the weekend mornings, it'll be cooler than it's been. 58 degrees tomorrow morning, 60 the low on Sunday low 60s Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. You have to deal with some wind this weekend, boaters. Tomorrow, northeast at 20. Sunday, it will be easterly at 20 to 25. So the small craft advisory is going to be in effect both days this weekend. A breezy Saturday at 82 degrees, 80 degrees on Sunday. And it still looks like Sunday will be the windiest day of the period with an east wind at about 22 miles per hour, gusting to near 30 miles per hour. Breezy on Monday and less wind finally by Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday. All right, thank you very much, Jim.
Breaking right now, there is a growing brush fire in the 1000 block of Garnett Avenue in Lehigh Acres. That is right next to Naples Avenue South and State Road 82. Wake News crews just arrived on the scene. Here's our first look. We're seeing it with you for the first time right now. You can see the smoke. Um, several units there, including the Florida Department of Forestry. Right now, details are very limited on the fire, but our crew just got there. We'll ask some questions. Count on Wake News to stay on top of this breaking situation through our newscast at 630 and 7 tonight. Another Wink News exclusive, all new at 6. NFL star and Cape Coral native Nate Allen says he's not surprised by the free report on the Fort Myers Police Department. Officers wrongly arrested him in 2015. Allen filed a lawsuit against the department in October. He hopes his case and this report will finally bring the change that he and the community have been calling for within the department for so long. Only Wink News reporter Michelle Kingston sat down with Nate Allen today. Michelle joins us live in the studio with this new at 6. When police arrested Nate Allen in 2015, it took them hours to release him after they realized they had the wrong guy. Allen told me today there's a lot more in the report than just his case that proves there's a lack of training within the department. That's like me running out on the field not knowing what to do, never playing safety before. I can't do my job effectively if I don't know what to do. NFL star and Cape Coral native Nate Allen speaking only to Wink News about the investigation by the Free Group into the Fort Myers Police Department, detailing allegations of mistrust, inexperience, and lack of training. It's still kind of overwhelming to think, man, this is actually going on in our police department. Allen just recently sued Fort Myers police after being wrongfully arrested and put behind bars, incorrectly identified as a man who exposed himself in his car to a teenage girl. That man still on the loose and Allen now speaking out about his experience with police. I, I mean, it was just like, wow, like there's really corruption going on like right here in our city. More than 100 officers were interviewed in the free report. In 2015, a high profile individual was arrested and detained by officers. Talking about Nate Allen's wrongful arrest. There was an allegation that the then chief had not been truthful. The report also mentions dozens of other cases, even unsolved homicides, that according to the report were mishandled. After reading this and ignoring what we've been saying for years, city leadership should be absolutely ashamed of themselves. I mean, I would hope that the city leaders would be biting at the bit to get stuff changed where it needs to be changed. This is really bigger than me. It's about everybody in this community and in this city. I mean, everybody deserves for the police department to be doing things the right way. Now, Nate Allen told me he hopes the city will complete the 32 recommendations listed in the report. His attorney, though, doesn't believe the city can afford to make those changes and wants the Department of Justice to take over. Live in the studio, Michelle Kingston, Wink News Now. A championship weekend ahead for two local basketball teams, plus the diagnosis is in on David Price's elbow. Wink Sports coming up next. A championship weekend ahead for Mariner on a court in Lakeland on Saturday and for the High Flying Eagles at home on Sunday. Mariner dismantled Palatka yesterday in the semis. The Tritons drove back after the game, practice at school today, and then headed back to Lakeland to get ready for tomorrow's 12:30 tip off against Leesburg, a team from the Orlando area. This should be a fair fight. The Tritons will be going for their first ever state championship. It's a veteran group that's extremely focused right now. FGCU is back in the A-Sun championship game and again the Eagles will host the trophy game. Rival North Florida will meet them at Alico Arena at 3 o'clock on Sunday. The winner advances to the NCAA tournament. Dunk City might be able to earn a 14 seed at the big dance. Zach Johnson had a monster effort in last year's conference title game. There's obviously a difference in the states where you got to approach it the same way. You got to be focused, you got to be locked in, you got to be ready to play. And just having energy to make sure your, your enthusiasm is up to where it needs to be. Johnson will be a big part of trying to stop two-time conference player of the year Dallas Moore. North Florida made 16 of 24 three-pointers in a win at Lipscomb last night. FGCU has already beaten the Ospreys twice. Well, Gulf Coast beat us twice. All that stuff means nothing. Because it's, it's a new game. 
The Rays are looking good this spring. Today, 25-year-old Ryan Yarbrough showed off his stuff. Two perfect innings with five strikeouts for the lefty who Tampa acquired in the Drew Smiley trade. The Rays also got Malik Smith in that trade. The bad for him was that misplay in center, but look at the speedster laying down this perfect bunt. Smith will likely start as a backup outfielder with the big league club, or he'll start in AAA. The lead story, though, in this one, the 5-2 win was that Yarbrough had those two dominant innings. It makes you want to go ask for a lawn chair and um, just hang out in center. Um, somebody throw me a cold water to cool me off while I'm in there. But he was he was awesome though, even after I uh, dropped the ball. Next pitch, ground ball out. Red Sox fans, you can breathe again. David Price won't need elbow surgery. Price went and saw two surgeons who say Price should just rest and rehab his sore left elbow for the next seven to ten days. And the FGCU women's basketball team gets started at the ASUN Conference Tournament. First round game for them at home tonight. Guys, back to you. All right, Bill, thank you. Final check of weather. Yeah, nice evening. Dry weather in place. Temperatures are in the 70s. Cooler in the morning. Both weekend mornings near 60 degrees. Breezy weather and enough of it for everybody Saturday <laughs> and Sunday. And some to spare, Small right? craft advisory for boaters. Yeah, very important. All right, thank you. CBS Evening News with Scott Pelley next on Week TV. And you can make a switch to more local news by turning to WXCW for Week News at 630.